right, what is going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode, episode number three of A Drink with Jake. I have a very special guest for everybody today. I am extremely excited about, and we're in quarantine, so obviously we're doing this on Zoom. But I've got a really good buddy of mine, super interesting guy, super smart guy, and a really, really good friend of mine, Brandon Wynn. Yes. What's up, buddy? What's up, man? It has been a while. I'm happy to see you. Yeah, good to see you too, man. I, I hope everything's going well with you guys. And, and first, I'll give kind of a, an overview of Brandon here. Uh, I was actually on the world team with you in 2013, where you got a bronze medal on rings. You've been on the national team for the men's gymnastics here in Team USA for multiple years. And uh, a lot of Pan American games, right? About what, mm-hmm. four, four or something of those? And mm-hmm, Yep. Yeah, a couple of those, and for the games, um, yeah, met two medals there, and uh, a couple championships. So sick. Champions. Yeah, man. Yeah. So, yeah, I was looking up actually your bio and it said one of your other names was uh, Lord of the Rings, which is absolutely true. <laughs> so, uh, well, thanks for joining me, buddy. I really appreciate it. I think this will be fun. I see you got your tea there. I went a little Dude. different different direction. I went with uh, some Battleborn Nevada beers. So. Dig it. <laughs> dig it. That's cool. What kind of beer is that? It's just a local brewery here. So we're, we're supposed to be doing a, uh, a, a virtual beer pong tournament with some celebrities here in Reno tomorrow. So they, really? sent, yeah, they sent some beer. So, so oh, that's cool. pretty cool guys. But uh, yeah, man. So everything's good. Your life is good. I see you on social media. You know, we were kind of chatting about this a little bit before about you're just mm-hmm. killing, the, killing the real estate game, man. It seems like, you know, it's not just these tiny, tiny little flips. Looks like you're doing a lot it's nuts tell me about yeah. it yeah so i'm trying to move up more but yeah basically you know kind of how i've constructed my professional life is i look at it like you know i have a, a business where I'm, I'm doing consulting and i'm making money from that when i make money from that i invested in real estate and then i try to live off of the cash flow that the real estate creates so i'm trying to like create this cycle so now I'm really heavily um, making sure I got everything set up where when I do make money in consulting, I can throw it right into a real estate vehicle and I can just do that over and over again. So over the past year, um, I bought 16 units, bought and rehab 16 units. So it's been a lot of, a lot of craziness and I didn't know a ton about rehab before this. <laughs> so it's been nuts and it's about to finish like next week. So I'm really excited to take a breath and, and just chill out for a second. Dang, that's crazy. Yeah. And are you renovating all 16? Like every unit is getting fit, like redone and finished and everything? Yeah. Yeah. Mostly completely redone. So some of them are cosmetic flips where I don't have to redo mechanicals. So I don't necessarily have to redo like electric and plumbing and um, and roof and things like that, but it's basically everything else. Like all new drywall, paint, floors, kitchens, bathrooms, everything. So it's been a wild ride. Wild, dude. That is sick though. It seems fun. So you're basically, so you've kind of got your your side business. You're taking that, you're you're purchasing these uh, real estate flipping them and then once you get those rented out or are, are you selling any or are you renting all of them renting them yeah renting them. Renting them. so Sweet. yeah yeah so that's kind of basically the plan and we you and i talked about this when i was doing more of the health consulting right and you know what i learned is like when i was making money from my front end business it didn't feel good to spend it yet because i remember thinking like well i don't know how much money i'm going to make next month or i don't right. know if this is going to be sustainable so i couldn't i didn't feel free and then I realized it's like, well, if I can just live off some of my cash flow, and then that capital is just being preserved by the real estate appreciating, and it's going up anyways. And then I learned that I could be comfortable like that. So I'm like, all right, this is how I'm going to build my life. It's like make money from something, put that in real estate, it makes cash flow, and live off the cash flow. So, so that's the game. how how often are you working on this? The the initial business, not the real estate side, but the initial the uh, what's the I, I, we were talking about. It. Cons- yeah, business consulting. So, yes. yes. So yeah. How often are you working? Are you still working on that even though you're super crazy with all the real estate stuff? Or Yeah. So since I've invested in all of this real estate, I slowed down on that a bit just so I could get this secure. But now that this is done, I'm about to go full force back into that and get back that cranked. Because that's the number one, right? Because right. I'll just run out of money eventually if that's yeah. not making me any money. So right. I'm, I'm about to go full force back. 
Dang, that's wild, dude. That's cool. It's cool. It's like a cool system, cool setup because a lot of people will just, you know, have earned money over the time with, you know, jobs or whatever. And then they'll kind of use the real estate as their income. And then they kind of sit back and kind of right. chill. But it seems like you're super motivated to just like almost build this big platform for, for yourself, which is sick. Um, have you, have you been affected by any of this, the Corona stuff? I know there's, we've got a rental property ourselves, so mm -hmm. I was kind of worried about it, but mm -hmm. luckily with ours, the, the people that moved into our rental property, their insurance is covering their rent because nice. their last, yeah, their last house, uh, burned down. So we don't actually right. have to worry too much about it, but you know, having 16 different units or however many units you might have, um, with people not paying rent and stuff, have you had it, have you been affected with this? Yeah, a little bit. I'd say 25% um, of my tenants are either on some sort of modified payment plan or they're, they're a little bit behind. It's not that big of a deal because I don't have a ton of leverage on my portfolio. So it's not right. like I have a ton of bills that I have to cover or I'm gonna, going to default. So it's like an okay time period. But yeah, it's, it's a little scary kind of, for sure. Yeah, I was going to say it's, yeah, it's a little scary. Out of everything though, like out of all the styles of real estate investing, I still think this is the safest. Like commercial is getting destroyed, right? Because yeah. Yeah, that's people huge that- huge amounts. Nuts. Yeah. People aren't able to buy and then those tenants can't pay their rent. And then people that built portfolios around Airbnb are just dying right now because it's like people aren't traveling. So no. that's all their revenue is gone. So yeah, right. it's wild, but I'm, I'm surviving. Yeah, that's good. And it's, I think with Airbnb, it's like, you see, usually you see the, the bright side of, oh, wow, these guys are going to pay a thousand dollars a week or $2,000 for the week. Well, that when you don't have people for a month and a half, that $2,000 a week adds up quick. So yeah. that's crazy. Yeah. That's cool though. And uh, what's been like either the most challenging and the most fun mm -hmm. about the whole uh, renovating process? Cause it's not necessarily, obviously you're not going into each 16 units and doing everything yourself, right? I'm assuming you're, you're getting contractors and working with them and, and kind of doing everything like that. Yeah, so good question. I don't know, the most challenging part, if you really like zoom out, is like staying stress-free throughout the process, right? right? And then understanding like the day to day up and downs aren't going to make or break the end goal. So trying not to get too emotionally involved in the up and downs and just being cool with everything that's going on and keeping the pace. But it's really, it's like, it's forming good relationships with contractors right. and setting a standard up front, a standard of operation, right? And then being on the same page and being able to manage that effectively. I think that's the hardest part because I think inherently the relationship between a contractor and an investor, they don't really work well together, right? Because the investor wants the most value out of the relationship, but a lot of times the contractor is kind of doing the broad line item, like, well, I fixed this, right? But usually it's not fixed to the standard that the investor wants it fixed. So it's right. just a really hard relationship. So just having um, your, your benefit aligned properly between the two, it's, it's really hard. So I'm just trying to stay stress-free, but that's the game. You know, I just remind myself like, all right, this is little stuff. Like, this is no big deal. It's gonna get way harder. So like, let's keep it cool right now because it's right. just gonna go up. Yeah, it's almost, it's kind of funny. It almost reminds me of like, you know, training or gymnastics. We both went through, you know, the crazy yep. process. It's like, you know, you have some days you're like, why do I do this? I hate this. This sucks. <laughs> yep. and, and then you'll have days you're like, all right, yeah, this, this is why I do it. Now I remember. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you remember what it was like, right? Like we'd have a bad day in the gym and we'd be so pissed off. And it's like, dude, like, what am I mad at? Right. right. It's like, okay, like I missed like this. I like fell in this dismount that I've done 10,000 times. I'm actually right. going to get mad about that. Yeah. It's like the same thing. I like catch myself. I'm like, why am I so mad? It's ridiculous. Yeah. Like it's like yeah. totally fine. Right. So, yeah. yeah. It's, it's so similar to gymnastics. It's crazy. That's one of the things I feel like is, is so hard for me. And, and I think probably a lot of athletes that transition to business and things like that after sports is, you know, I were, I, we've got a lot of employees. I think we've got almost like 50 employees, uh, at our, our gymnastics facility. So it's, it's kind of the same process probably of when you're hiring, you're looking for the people who have the right personality, the right culture, you want to fit your gym and everything like that and, and, and have all those features and you try to be as upfront about that as possible. So down the road, you're not dealing with uh, some issues you don't want to have to deal with, right? Like, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Isn't um, it crazy how similar it is uh, to being an athlete? It's like the same thing. It's yeah, it's like the emotions and the things, it's all the same. I was, it's funny. I just posted a, uh, someone tagged me in a 2016 
team finals, uh, floor routine. And I was like getting nervous. And I was like, I hated being so nervous for these events, you know, and it's just like, everything's on the line. You're so nervous. And I was like, just watching this makes me nervous. So I was like, when I retire, I'm going to be so excited to retire, never be nervous. I don't have to stress about all this crazy stuff. And then you get in a business and it's the exact same thing. It's the same thing. <laughs> I, I tell this to current athletes all the time. It's like, you, you keep dreaming about what it's going to be like and how easy it's going to be when you retire. And it almost makes you skip over how great it is to just be in that moment as an athlete. And I tell them the same thing. I'm like, it's going to be hard then too. And you're going to have big goals and it's going to feel like the end of the world then as well. So just enjoy this moment. Don't skip over it. Cause I remember it. I'm sure you felt the same oh, way. Dude. You just like, you wanted it to be over at times, even yeah. though you loved it. You're like, I just want this to be over. Yeah. And now that I see on the other side of the fence, I'm like, Oh, I get it now. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. Cause you kind of hear that. I feel like, you know, I, I'm so very satisfied. I don't know how you feel about retiring, mm -hmm. but I feel satisfied about, you know, mm -hmm. just finally making that decision of being done. But then you start, you know, you get into this stuff and you're like, did I, could, I think I could have kept going, but at the same time, you know, I think there's a point. Yeah. Did you, when you were decided to kind of officially be done, did you really, did you come to a point where you're like, I absolutely know that I'm just done. I don't, you know, I don't want to do mm -hmm. this anymore. Or was it kind of like, what do I do? What am I going to do? Should I? Mm -hmm. So for me, you know, initially after, I think I ran away from the sport because I was like, I was almost, I was almost so sick of being in the sport because I was in it for, you know, we were in it for so long yeah. that I ran away and didn't really process my feelings. Like I didn't even make a decision. I like was done and then started a business like two months later and I was like all in on the business and I was just going, yeah. I was ready to transfer that energy like right into the business. And I don't think I really thought about it. And then when I processed it, I realized that I didn't, I didn't necessarily need to be done. And then all my feelings towards wanting to move away from the sport really weren't, they were like feelings of like of resentment. They weren't really feelings right. of like, it actually made sense to quit. So I didn't learn that until a couple of years later. But in the end, I think it's like all the same. I mean, like when I think about my end goal, I'm like, I just want to be happy, right? I want to have emotional intelligence and I want to treat people right. And I want to get to where I want to go in life. So I didn't think it was like that big of a decision, but yeah, I think I ran away in the beginning and didn't, didn't have to be that way, but I, I did. For sure. Yeah. I kind of, you know, it's funny you say that because it's like, like I kind of knew I was, I was done, you know, but it, mm -hmm. at, at some point it's like, you're almost done because you're just, you're just like, like you said, you've been in it for so long and you're just frustrated with the whole process and how difficult it is. And you're just like I've been doing this for so long. I want to step away, but mm -hmm. it's almost at the same time, you're just kind of like, pissed off at the sport and you don't want to like you don't want to watch anything you don't want to be a part you know and yeah. it's it's weird it's almost like you do need that break to get away from the sport not be involved for a little while before you can kind of enjoy being back in it and like watching or cheering for teams that are out there and yeah. stuff. it's kind of a weird definitely a weird it's, sense yeah it's totally weird and I was completely away and then i started getting involved again you and i haven't even chatted about this a bit but um i've been going to the otc and just working with the resident athletes there and doing some coaching and things like that because cool. now i can come back to the sport because i've dropped that like i had like my yep. two years or three years out i've like dropped it yep. and then even going back into the gym i was going back into the gym at ohio state i was talking with some of the guys there i started doing some ring strength and things like that and Dang. then just remembering what it was like to be back in the gym. It's like, I, I, now I understand my problem solving process as an athlete. And then it taught me so much more about life. Yeah. It's like, whoa, like no matter what, like the obstacle came up in the gym, you just figured out a way to make it happen no matter what. No, right. And it was crazy. There'd be times where you felt like you could barely stand up out of a chair, but you could still do a floor routine. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, if, you know, if you could take that into life, it's, it's totally insane. And when I went back into the gym, I remembered that I'm like, whoa, those that's are crazy cool. times and then you yeah. can learn a lot. That's cool. Yeah. I kind of had a, I actually didn't know you were getting back into the gym thing that, but so that kind of fits exactly what I was like saying. That's pretty, that's pretty cool. But, and have you, like I was doing again this the other day, have you, when you go back into the gym and those memories kind of come back, maybe at the time, the memories that some of the memories you think of, you're like where you were kind of frustrated with the sport or whatever it was. It's like, I almost think back to all of these places and all of the things we got to do and it's like, man, that was so 
freaking cool. Like being in Belgium, we went to the coffee shops yeah. with the chocolate and you know, yeah. all this stuff. It's like, does that happen to you? Do you think back on maybe something that was, you were uh, frustrated then, but now you're like, that was so cool. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'll never, I'll try to never let it happen again. Cause it was so cool. But in the moment we were so worried about, you know, the competition or, I mean, we had our fun, but yeah, it's, yeah, I think back about that a lot. It's totally crazy. And I don't think you can see it until you're in our position. Oh, for it's sure. It's so hard to see it as an athlete, right? Yeah, I, I agree. It's like, you know, you talk to everybody and they're like, oh, you know, just enjoy time now because it's, it's not fun when you get out. And I'm like, what do you mean it's not fun, man? I just did four hours of gymnastics and two hours of strength and flexibility. And I got to meet in three weeks and I feel heavy, you know, like you feel like it's mm -hmm. the whole world right there. So that's funny, man. So. Yeah. So sweet. So you've got, you're back into the gym helping. How much, like, how often are you doing that? Are you, so let me step back a little bit. Are you in Colorado now? Are you in New York? Cause I, I where are you I'm based in Columbus now? Okay. So, I you're, know. so you're all over the place. This is why I can't keep up with you. <laughs> yeah. So I'm in Columbus now because the real estate is here. Cause I wanted to invest here. Cause I understood this market the best. Cause I was just, you know, I went to college here been there for um, so long. I understood the market. So I did, I sold some of my investments in Colorado okay. and then started buying here. So I'm here for that. But I've just been going to the OTC a couple of times to kind of okay. just help out. I'll just cool. go in for like a week or something like that right. and uh, coach the resident athletes there and sit with them, and, which is so cool. And we could talk about that forever. But being a teammate and now kind of helping them out in a different capacity is totally insane. It's like oh, a totally right. different dynamic. And Yep. But yeah, so I just, um, I've only done that a couple of times, but I've been involved in talking to Brett a bit and um, probably about six months ago was the first time I went out there and kind of getting back involved in the sport again. Nice. Very cool, man. Very cool. Yeah. And so how often are you traveling back and forth? Is it just when you have like a project going on, you'll jump out there or was it because you were selling stuff you needed to go out there? Or are you still going out so, there? Yeah. So are you saying in Ohio or in in Colorado? In Colorado yeah. So I don't go, go very often. Once I sold everything, I didn't have any business there. And then I've just gone now a couple of times, um, specifically to the OTC to coach. And I'm spending the majority of my time now in Columbus to oversee all of these rehabs. Okay, so cool. It's been, I naively thought that I could do it from afar, and I was absolutely wrong. Like, yeah. I learned really quick. It, and were you just trying to get like picture updates or, or video FaceTime? Like, what were you doing for that? You know, I, I thought that originally I thought I was going to buy stuff that didn't need rehab. And I thought I was going to be able to buy it well under market. And I was going to be able to walk in with a lot of equity. And I learned that the market was really competitive mm -hmm. and that wasn't happening anymore. Maybe it was happening in 13 and 14 and maybe 15. But by now it's like, there's nothing really under market. Everybody knows what's going on. They know the real estate market's great. So the only way to create value for myself is to buy stuff that needed a lot of work. And the second gotcha. I realized that, I was like, I have to come here and do it. Gotcha. Yeah, I remember it was cool. I remember uh, just following you on Instagram with, uh, which is, what, what's your Instagram? Throw your Instagram out there. Um, Brandon Wynn Jim. Brandon Wynn Jim. So when I, was, I saw the stories that you were walking through the places and you're like, oh, we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And it's cool now because I just saw you guys were there checking like yep. the kitchens out and stuff mm -hmm. like dude looks freaking awesome it's so yeah, sick yeah, yeah. that's cool and and tina for for those who may not know tina is your girlfriend actually mm -hmm. on team usa for boxing now is she is she there with you or are you guys bouncing back and forth from new york still or no yeah so she is here and actually she is um no longer on team usa she's actually on team puerto rico Whoa. and she's going to the Olympics. Yeah, she's going to the Olympic qualifiers for Puerto Rico. Dang, that's sick. I did not yes. know that. Holy cow. I know, I know. Wild ride. It's been crazy. So she's that's been cool. spending a lot of time in Puerto Rico at their training center getting ready for their first Olympic qualifier. Dang, that's awesome. So cool. Well, yeah. I wish her the best, and, and we'll have to catch up more uh, about yeah. that. i got to hear some more. That's cool. Mm -hmm. um, so, so what's your next step? So I, I was kind of, again, talking to you a little bit before mm -hmm. this. We've, you've successfully got all the properties, they're, they're renovated, they're about to be rented out. Do you, now, do you have to still find tenants? What's your next step? Where, where are you going from yeah. here? Now? So right at like literally the next step and the thing I'm working on actively is, so I'm, I'm getting my financing back. So how I generally do it is I go in and I buy properties for cash. I renovate them, I put tenants in, and then I get financing against the properties okay. with the new appraised value, which is higher because of the work and also higher because of the leases that are in place. 
So I'm going to be getting that money back in. After I get that money back in, I have all the tenants in, which I just have four more units to fill. Um, so after all of that's done, um, then I'm going to go back and focus more on the consulting and making sure that's still moving along like I needed to. And now that I have this all stabilized, second that money comes in, I can just continue to buy real estate with it because I have this process down and I've built this team out now. Right. So, that's cool. Now, how yeah. long does that process kind of take? So from going to the, the business part of it to finding properties, is there a certain time of the year you're trying to find these properties? Or are you just kind of once this business project's done, you've got that money to invest, you start researching yeah. and, and plug yeah, it, it in? It, it keeps going because it's like you, you open the floodgates, right? So the way that I'm sourcing deals and finding deals, you form those relationships and I have people that are looking for off market deals. They just, it keeps coming, right? Sure. So you just kind of keep the money coming in and then you can just keep buying deals. And then you have contractors that have been working with you and they want to get more work with you. And if you can kind of keep them going, then you can keep them involved in your projects. You don't have to find a new team. Right. And then you have somebody that fills the unit. So yeah, it just, it just kind of keeps going. Yeah. It's kind um, of like this well greased wheel that you got going on that just, yeah. It's turning, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just now that it's turning, you don't want it to slow down. Right. That's awesome, dude. That's cool. It's cool to hear that. Like, you know, we've kind of done some business once we, we got out of gymnastics, we did some fitness stuff together. Uh, it's yep. cool to see you transitioning from the athlete. And, and I think you, it's funny. You can see the athletes that are usually, if they're a very good motivated athlete, if they're transitioning to something else, they're usually going to succeed because mm -hmm. they're, they're driven, they're hardworking. So it's, it's cool to see that. Um, mm -hmm. Speaking of fitness, dude, I know yeah. you're a fitness. We, I always knew this, right? So yeah. are you doing anything with fitness anymore other than just like your, your daily health working out? Do you have any yeah. adventures with that? Yeah, not so much professionally with fitness anymore. Um, just my daily health stuff, which yeah. is crazy. I, and I wanted to talk to you about this and get your, I want to hear your take on your stuff because I see you like more Olympic style lifting and, um, but I'll, I'll tell you mine and then, and then let's hear it. But yeah, just general stuff. Now eating differently, trying to pay attention to eating for longevity and, you know, my cognitive function and just my overall body function instead of like, you know, how we used to be like, make sure we had enough protein for muscle mass, not too many carbs so we have abs and yep. that's it. It's like, it's great. But now we're like getting older. It's like, right. okay, now we need to like pay attention to some other stuff. Exactly. Um, but it's definitely a, a transition, right? So what I'm feeling in my fitness journey, and I'd love to hear your opinion is continuing to lift weights at least the way you and I were lifting weights. Right. It's like that will get old. And then how long do you do that for? And if you do it the way we're doing it, I don't know. I feel like I need something new in that yeah. game. Is that how you feel as well? Totally. Totally. Yeah. I get bored with yeah. stuff. I mean, that's with anything. I get bored with anything pretty quick, you know? So that's the exact way I feel. I've got to switch it up, find something new, something challenging and, and that you're excited to make it fun. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. we did that with gymnastics. Like you're going in there doing the same morning circuits or a couple, four, four different morning circuits a week that, you know, you've been doing for 10 years and it's kind of the same thing. And although you're very athletic, it's really cool and you're strong but it's like, you've done it a lot. And I want to, you know, yeah. now that we, we don't have to be so specific, I like switching things up and having fun with it. Yeah. That's cool. So are you still doing like bodybuilding style lifting? Or are you doing a combination of that and Olympic lifting? Dude, I was saying the other day, I almost feel like I'm training for like, uh, like a triathlon, you know, I don't know. It's yeah. weird. It's like, I learned Olympic lifting, USA weightlifting mm -hmm. reached out. They set me up with a gym here. Unfortunately, the gym closed. So I have some in my mm -hmm. garage and I train mm -hmm. there. Um, I've got a road bike, so I do a lot of biking for cardio, which is just a lot of the stuff I'm doing now is trying to just get outside, man. We spent 20 yeah. years in a box training, you know, so I try to get outside and have some fun. So I'm doing uh, bicycling, I'm doing mountain biking. We actually were signed up for like a, a marathon, but it's like a team marathon. So it's 178 miles that your team runs. And we did it last year with uh, 11 guys. So normally it's a team of 12. One couldn't make it in. So we did it with 11. You're running about 15 and a half miles per person um, wow. over like a day and a half to two days. Mm -hmm. So you start down here in Reno, run up through Lake Tahoe, back down through Carson City, back to Reno. Super cool. fun. Then you sleep on the floor in a Walmart for like two hours on, on the concrete, <laughs> sleeping back. Like it's just one of those, like cool. it sucks when you're doing it, but it's fun. Um, we were going to do that this year with six people. So it jumps it up to like probably almost 30 miles a person. 
over the two days. Mm. But with all this stuff going on, it got canceled. So, mm. oh wow, yeah. But yeah, dude, the fitness thing is like I. The thing is like I love working out. I love uh, the feeling of I don't feel like doing it, and then when I do it, I feel awesome after. You know, mm. like that whole yeah. that whole feeling. And just being healthy, I like being athletic. So, I, like I said, I just switch my stuff up all the time and find something that I'm excited to get out there and do too. Yeah, because you were running a lot, right? Because I remember you were training for that one marathon, and you ended up not. You ended up not going, right? Dude, it's, it's someone texts me and they're like, "Why do you always train for these things?" And then they all get canceled. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but fine. yeah, this one was obvious with Corona and everything. But the mm -hmm. last one. Uh, the Olympic channel was doing a documentary on some people and they were doing uh, a documentary on them training and running a marathon out in North Korea. Mm -hmm. So that was going to be super sick. I was like, man, when I'm never going to go to North Korea right. on willingly, unless it's for something like this and I'm going with a group of people, you know? So mm -hmm. it's like, all right, I'll do it. And then like two weeks before we had sent in our paperwork, our documentation, our passports. And unfortunately the state department just, kind of denied access they sent us a letter from them and said that we just don't think it's basically like what you're doing is not important enough to go there mm. with we're yeah. you know risking the safety of americans kind of thing so mm. that's why that one didn't go through but yeah running a lot which i actually hate running dude it's it's mm -hmm. <laughs> super hard yeah it's crazy it's, it's so different like when we work out we get our heart rate up and stuff and this is more about pace you know right keeping that heart rate at a good pace and pushing yourself, but not too hard, not too, you know, slow. So you speaking of marathons actually successfully yeah. finished it, man. Like I know it was insane. So it was crazy. Really hard. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you were doing that and I was like, I just can't imagine. What are you like? 165, 170 now? 75. Yeah. Right. Just yeah. monster <laughs> of a guy just running this marathon, dude. Like, that, so how, how was that was that just super awesome hard difficult so, fun so hard the cool thing like that that was going on in the marathon that i found in running is like to watch what happened to my brain when i would run mm -hmm. like watch my brain come up with these inc these crazy excuses and why i should stop running and it was just <laughs> like it was convincing me like stop moving your legs it was like insane and i would see it in training and even in the marathon i'm like uh, I might injure myself. I was like, it's okay. You know, I could get stress fractures in my legs. Like yeah. at mile 20, I'm like thinking these insane things, but right. yeah, it was super hard. My mom did it and she's just the beast and just like, came like, let's run awesome. a marathon. Yeah. <laughs> so, but uh, after, once I crossed the finish line, I just had my legs in the air, like up against the tree. And I like, I literally couldn't walk for like three hours after, like my legs were like all like loose <laughs> and totally insane. And I was sore for probably a week and a half, two weeks. Yeah, I was going to, I was going to say that's brutal, man, but it's, it's yeah. crazy. That's cool. The, the whole uh, mental part of it seems just like it's wild where, and I, and I think part of it too, is being a high level athlete. You're always concerned and worried about, Oh, if I get hurt, like I can't go here. I can't keep training. So like maybe back off a little bit and then kind of heal it up and then get back going again, you know? So yeah. it's kind of, I think that's, probably part of it the other part of it is you know your brain just doesn't want to do things that are hard <laughs> yeah exactly it's so interesting to see what happens right it's like how yeah. your brain just totally wants to avoid the pain yeah it is like thought it was so good you know because then if you can get tough there you can get tough in other areas of life so i was like this right. is a good lesson yep makes you kind of understand like don't just quit at the first of like oh should i stop or you know makes you realize you can push through a lot more than maybe you originally yeah. thought <laughs> yeah so, no dude, that's very true that's so awesome well sweet man a uh we you know we're pretty close to time we got a couple more yeah. minutes left if there's anything you want to shout out say to anybody where you know if people are interested in maybe your your business uh consulting mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. where, where where can people find you they can just contact me on social. So Brandon Wynn Jim. Um, so I'm there on Instagram and I'll be posting a lot more stuff coming up. So yeah, easy to find there. Awesome, man. Well, I look forward to it again. It's good to see you, buddy. We used to train all the time together. Yeah. So it's, it's awesome yeah. to catch up with you, man. Uh, I wish the best and I'm going to be in touch. You know, I want to keep up with your real estate and, and keep watching what you're doing. It's awesome, man. Yeah, sounds great. Let's catch up soon. All right. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate it again. And that's going to be the episode, guys. Thank you with uh, another episode of A Drink with Jake. We'll see you guys in the next one.